Hi, my name is Jonathan, and I'm the CEO of DataCamp. DataCamp is an online data science school. We teach R and data science through video lessons and fun interactive coding challenges. And today, we will talk about R, the increasingly popular statistical programming language. First of all, I'll give you an overview of R, its advantages, its disadvantages, and compare R to another very popular data analysis language called Python. Second, my colleague Martin will go over two case studies showing off the power of R in industry. And thirdly, Philip will take a deeper dive with you in the R language. So what is R? Well, R is a programming language developed by Robert Gentleman and Russ Eihecke in the 90s. And as researchers at the University of Auckland in New Zealand, they conceived a language that was particularly useful for statistical computing. And in contrast to other statistical software, such as SPSS, R uses the command line interface. This means that you can easily reproduce results of other academics and professionals if you just have the R script available. Such an R script is simply a set of commands that are executed one after the other. R has other benefits, of course. First of all, R is open source and relatively easy to learn. And consequently, R appeals to a large audience, both in academia and business. Moreover, it's fairly easy to create R packages, which are simple extensions of R aimed at solving particular problems. R's very active community has created thousands of R packages for a very broad range of applications in the financial sector, healthcare sector, and for cutting edge research. Now, there are some downsides to R as well. R seems relatively easy to learn at first, but it is hard to really master it. And that sometimes results in poorly written R code that can be hard to read and hard to maintain. Furthermore, poorly written R code can become slow if you're working with large data sets. So how does R compare to that other very popular language for data analysis called Python? Which one is best? Well, there's no right answer, but there are a few things to keep in mind when you decide what language works best for you. Whereas R is a very popular language in the statistics and the data science community, Python is a more general purpose programming language. And for very typical problems with well-defined data sets, R offers all sorts of packages that will get you up and running very quickly. Whereas once problems become more advanced and require non-standard data handling, it can be easier to implement your own strategy in Python. Also, R's visualizations capabilities are very advanced, making it very suitable for reporting your results. With Python, however, you will have a hard time matching the quality of R's plots. So in general, there's a typical trade-off between ease of use and flexibility. R offers somewhat less flexibility and tilts towards ease of use side of things, while Python adheres more to flexibility. So whether to choose R or Python really depends on the problem you're trying to solve. Now that you have a general overview of R, Martin will go over some interesting applications of the R programming language. So head over to the next section and be amazed by his examples. The possible applications of R code are inexhaustible. Visualizing your company's sales data or analyzing your Twitter feed are only the beginning. Imagine developing models to make predictions for drug development or implementing your own trading strategies. R can do it all. My name is Martin, I'm the CMO of DataCamp, and I'll guide you through two real-life cases that use R. The first example I'll cover here is related to Facebook. Back in 2010, Paul Butler, an intern at Facebook, wanted to visualize friendships. More specifically, he was interested in the locality of friendship. Is friendship a rather local phenomena, or does friendship surpass us all borders, building a closely interconnected global network? This was a question he solved with R's graphical capabilities. His first attempts proved that he was simply trying to plot too much data. The resulting graph didn't provide any insight at all. But when he worked with a subset on a more regional level, a wonderful pattern appeared. Can you spot the links? This map shows more than simple population centers in bright white. It also shows cultural relationships. For example, Hawaii links heavily to the United States. India stands out because of the dark blobs that represent Russia and China. Paul had once again proven the power of visualization in R. Now let's dive into the world of love, more particularly dating. With over 30 million users, the dating site OkCupid has access to a lot of data. 
People give information regarding their preferences, hobbies, sexuality and more. Needless to say that they are in a perfect position to identify patterns in this data. Using its data, OkCupid okay often posts funny and surprising insights about their users, such as recommendations concerning the best questions on a first date or the difference in preference between black and white people. In the beginning, the team of OKCupid okay simply used Excel. But after some months, they switched to R. This change has made their analysis both better and faster, and allowed them to make better visualizations as well. To wrap up, let's have a look at the visualization that OKCupid okay generated from their data. What if religion and writing proficiency are correlated? The team analyzed the profile text of half a million users comparing religion and writing level. The data showed that on average, atheist users had the overall best writing proficiency. In the next video, Philip will guide you through a hands-on case study to move your data analysis from Excel to R, just as the team at OKCupid did. On the way, he will introduce basic R concepts such as R variables, functions and data structures. With the background and interesting possible applications of R in mind, let's get our hands dirty with a tutorial in R. My name is Philip. I'm a content creator at DataCamp, and I will guide you through the process of solving a basic data analysis problem in R instead of in Excel. We have a data set of flights in America, with information such as arrival time, departure time, air time, and many more. Let's try to find the number of flights that have been taxiing longer at departure and arrival than they were actually airborne. What would be the typical workflow in Excel? We'd have to load the dataset through several mouse clicks, manually specify new columns with formulas, and filter out the rows that match our query. It's straightforward and user-friendly, but there are also some disadvantages as well. First of all, what if our data changes? We'd have to redo the series of mouse clicks to update the analysis. Also, what if our data does not come as a nicely formatted CSV, but needs to be fetched from a database? In Excel, you'd need additional steps before you can start your actual analysis. Finally, Excel is not very practical when working with huge datasets, which is typical nowadays. So let's skip Excel and head over to R to solve our question. How many flights are taxiing longer than being airborne? We'll be working in RStudio, R's most popular IDE. As Jonathan explained earlier, R makes use of a command line interface. This is the console where you can type R commands. Once you hit the Enter button, R will interpret and execute your expression and possibly return a result. Assume that the flight's dataset is available as a CSV file. R has a built-in function, read.csv, to easily load this dataset into your R session. We simply pass the file name to the function and assign the result to a variable flights using R's assignment operator, a smaller than sign and a dash. So this command assigns the CSV file to the variable flights. If we now hit enter, there is a variable flights in my workspace that contains the entire data set. Excel would need several mouse clicks here. Flights is a data frame, an R data structure that is typical for data sets. Rows correspond to observations, while columns denote variables, just like in Excel. Remark that the environment tab in RStudio, which lists the element in my workspace, now contains the flights variable. We see that the data set contains 5,000 observations and 21 variables. If we click on the variable, we get a clear overview of the dataset's contents. To solve our problem, we will be needing taxi in, taxi out, and airtime. Before we start with the actual coding, let's have a look at how we can subset this dataset. Suppose we want to select the value in the fifth column of the 40th observation in the dataset. You can use a bracket notation for this. So here we type flights, open brackets, 40, comma, 5, close brackets. <coughs> If you do not specify one of the two values in the square brackets, you select all the indices. For example, this command, flights, open brackets, 40, comma, close brackets, gives us all information about the 40th observation, while this one, flights, open brackets, comma, 5, close brackets, will print out the entire fifth column of the data set. If the columns of the data frame have names, as is in the case of flights, you can also use the dollar notation to select a single column. For example, flights dollar sign taxi in gives us the 5000 values in the taxi in column. With this new knowledge, let's reconsider the problem. How many flights were taxiing longer than being airborne? So for how many flights is the sum of taxi in and taxi out larger than airtime? 
we first have to calculate the sum of the taxi in and taxi out columns and then compare the resulting column with the airtime column. To add a new column to the flight's dataset, simply use the assignment operator in combination with the dollar notation. So flights dollar sign taxi total gets assigned flights dollar sign taxi in plus flights dollar sign taxi out. This observation has added a new column to the flight's data frame named taxi total containing the sum of taxi in and taxi out for each observation. Let's add another column in a similar manner, taxi longer, that contains logical values. True if the value of taxi total is greater than airtime for an observation and false otherwise. So we use flights dollar sign taxi longer gets assigned to flights dollar sign taxi total greater than flights dollar sign airtime. Now for the last step, we will use this new column, taxi longer, to select rows using the square bracket notation from before. We only keep the observations for which the corresponding taxi longer value equals true. So we type flights, open brackets, flights, dollar sign, taxi longer, comma, close brackets. Don't forget the comma at the end here, as you want to select all the variables related to these observations. The result that gets printed to the console shows us that out of the 5,000 flights we have been working with, only a few match our condition. We can wrap this command in the function nrow, short for number of rows, to get the actual number of observations. So we just type nrow, open parenthesis, and then the command we typed earlier, and then close the parenthesis. It shows that there are 34, so we've solved our question with only four commands, loading the dataset, creating two new columns, and subsetting the dataset based on the new column taxi longer. Apart from data manipulation, you can do many more things in R. To learn about all aspects of data science, specifically in R, visit our interactive online school data camp and learn R in the comfort of your browser. Thanks for watching.